Hi everyone, Evan Lowe here. I'm here with John Zimmer, president and co-founder of Lyft. John, thank you so very much for having me. Yeah, good to meet you. Yes. So now tell me about this opportunity that we have here in not only the state of California, but the ecosystem with respect to transportation. As millennials, uh, you are 33 yep. and I'm 34. Yeah. Transportation is such a difficult issue for us to get to and from our home yeah. uh, and to work. But tell me about some of the innovations that you've been doing here and why it's so important, particularly for millennials. Yeah, so it's actually the second highest household expense in the United States. So Americans spend $9,000 per vehicle every year to, to own and operate that vehicle in the United States. And they only use the car 4% of the time. So it's a, it's a big opportunity to create more efficiency, to save people money. And I think for for millennials and for people that are just coming to age uh, to drive, it's a moment to, that you can actually decide in some major cities to not own a car or to get rid of your second car. Last year on Lyft, we had about 250,000 of our users get rid of their second car. And the bigger opportunity here for the state of California and the country is to think about our cities differently. Our cities have been designed for the car historically. LA is a kind of that, that great example of like so much traffic and such car culture, but all of California really. Um, but LA is paved over, the majority of LA is paved. And if we uh, complete the task, which we intend to do, which is provide a full alternative to car ownership, we can redesign our cities around people and not cars. And, th and that has major quality of life benefits. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it might be a generational issue? Uh, older generations might need to adapt to something <coughs> like this? Or do you think particularly with the younger generations, maybe that's something that we sort of adapt a little bit more readily? Yeah, I think you know uh, our generation may, may be early adopters, mm -hmm. uh, and those even uh, younger than us that are coming to age uh, to get their license are actually waiting longer than, than our generation did, and, and many are never getting a car because now they have options like Lyft. Um, but there's more and more, I'd say, broadening of that um, demographic that's using Lyft. You know, one of the big uh, areas we're developing is healthcare rides. So for uh, you know our grandparents mm -hmm. who no longer want to drive or um, need to get to a medical appointment on time and can't rely on certain sure. types of transportation, uh, that's another big opportunity. Sure. I think it's also part of the role for the state and local entities to build the infrastructure in place to allow for many of these different technologies and the utility of the day-to-day -day lives that people um, do each and every day yeah. uh, when they get out. Yeah, in order to fully realize our vision, you know, our vision is to improve people's lives with the world's best transportation. Uh, and, and as I said, it's to kind of fully replace car ownership so our cities can be redesigned. In order to fully realize that, we need to partner with people like yourselves um, because there needs to be policies that uh, help eliminate traffic, that help bring on new technologies, that help change parking laws um, so that we get rid of some, some lots or reduce the number of roads so that we can you know, add more housing or uh, parks. Mm -hmm. um, and so it will need to be a real partnership in order to, to get the most benefits. I think that's why it might be important to get younger people to be in public service, for example, to share the various perspectives about cost of living or the transportation needs that we might have, which might be different from various generations as well, too. Yeah. And there, there's, there's only maybe once every hundred years or so, at least, um, you know, more recently, that you get to totally reinvent an infrastructure and totally reinvent how cities are built. And uh, yeah, that's the opportunity for someone who wants to get into to policy work sure. uh, to, to be a big part of that. Now, how are we doing in comparison with the state of California and the nation and maybe even globally? Uh, what are some things that we might be able to do to say, hmm, what are some other best practices in other countries and what are the, some of the unique challenges that we should be mindful of? Yeah, so the, the first cities we launched were in California. Uh, San Francisco and Los Angeles. One, because we were here in San Francisco. Um, and two is because we were able to partner with the California Public Utilities Commission and create a new set of rules. Because this industry didn't exist previously, we wanted to work with uh, someone to create new rules that both protected public safety and created uh, a good type of innovation for, for the citizens of California. Um, we were able to do that here in California. So that was really positive. I think what um, California and other, other states um, should continue to look to do is uh, find ways to partner with companies that are being responsible and see how we can um, sync our timelines because we're moving quickly and because of the way rules have been written mm -hmm. for how cities, states, and the federal government need to be governed, sometimes those timelines become really difficult. So if, if, if you and others can help innovate 
to allow for cases when the right types of policies can be pushed more quickly with the right checks and balances. That, that'll be the tough balance, but I think that's, that's where um, things could move more quickly together. I think that is not to be lost on the point that you just made, which is the philosophy that you have with respect to engaging with in partnership uh, with the regulatory and with government and trying to solve these problems and finding the end need versus many oftentimes the case might be an adversarial role. Um, and that is oftentimes problematic. Was there something specific to you that you said, no, you know what, we need to work in partnership versus adversarial. This is, this is the regulatory agencies um, in which there are some other companies in other tech sectors might, might think differently. Yeah, I think it's my, my preference is to, to work with people, to bring people together. Uh, and, uh, you know, I believe that we are not the complete part of the solution, but that government plus industry can, can create something way, way bigger. Um, so that's been the belief from the beginning, um, and, and it's proven out. I think uh, you know, we continue to grow our market share. We continue to gain new opportunities because of building respectful relationships. It's kind of obvious stuff, um, but it doesn't always work. There's sometimes there are some, some governments that have you know, pushed back on us for reasons that we didn't you know, think were right or fair, sure. and, and what we did in those cases was we, we stated our case. We mm -hmm. said, here is all, you know, if you're trying to protect public safety, here's all the things we do for public safety. Um, and in many cases, they were above what they were requiring of other forms of transportation. Um, and so it's, it's about having an open dialogue and, uh, and, and working to find a good balance. Sure. Um, you mentioned sort of about market share. Uh, I understand that the company's valuation is close to $11 billion now. Did you ever think that or imagine that the, the work that you've done in uh, putting your time into this could ever reach that magnitude? I never, I don't think I really thought about it in, in that way. Uh, I don't know that I ever imagined it, it to be, you know, that large right. from a monetary perspective. Um, we, we really think about the, the mission that we have to improve people's lives mm -hmm. through, through this service. And we are measuring ourselves for sure on, you know, the number of rides we do or the financial performance of the business. But every time we do that with the company, we talk about the you know, social, economic, and environmental mm -hmm. impact that that number of rides can have on, on a community. So that's, that's what we're really excited about and that, that's what we're fighting for. Well, you talked about the societal impact and the sort of corporate philosophy about being engaged in the community as well too. Mm -hmm. Did that come naturally because of your upbringing? Is it something that you just believed in by leading by example? Where did that come from? Yeah, I, I, would, yeah, I would probably credit uh, my parents. Um, uh, for, for some of that or, or much of that. Um, my background's in hospitality, um, and so I studied that in school. And to me, it's both obvious um, and important and also good for business to take care of the people or the community that allows you to do what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, in our case, uh, that's our employees, that's our uh, drivers, and that's our passengers. Sure. And then so in, with that regard, th with this responsibility uh, becomes some unique challenges. Yeah. I know that as young people, oftentimes uh, individuals may question our length of experience mm -hmm. and therefore we don't have the right judgment. Yeah. I know I've experienced that myself as, yeah, a, as a young public official. I, help me understand when you talk to venture capitalists and other individuals yeah. in the market, is that a unique challenge and how do you overcome some of those things? Yeah, I mean, I think it just took time. I mean, some people think, oh, um, you know, what we've done is kind of happened overnight with Lyft. Mm -hmm. uh, Lyft is five and a half years old, but uh, my co-founder and I have been working on this with this amazing team for 10 years. Um, and so it, it took a lot, of, a lot of effort, a lot of people saying no, a lot of people saying we were too young, a lot of people saying we were crazy, um, to, but, but, but staying focused on the mission and the people um, and not letting too many distractions get in our way uh, mm -hmm. has been really helpful. Very good. Now, how about the future of Lyft with respect to autonomous vehicles yeah. and the trajectory and sort of leading the way? Yeah. Oftentimes, I see the company, for example, helping government to write rules and regulations for consumer protection, but also the utility of the day-to-day -day lives, yeah. and you helping to kind of guide us in that direction. Yeah. Can you give us a sense of the future and your, from your vantage point? Yeah, so I think, um, I would guess we're aligned with most governments that safety is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And so any, any new technology needs to take care of the people that are using it. This is obvious, um, but that should be kind of the basis for, for bringing something new on board. Um, but then if, if we can create a positive uh, economic, environmental, and social change, uh, for example, through autonomous vehicles, 
uh, in addition to the type of rides we already give, um, then that, that's something we can do, we mm -hmm. should do. And, and that's something that's gonna start happening pretty soon. Very good. Yeah. Now, one final qu question yeah. uh, with respect to individuals thinking and watching your story. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of just a, such a, a dream and aspirational goal. Uh, what piece, one piece of advice would you give uh, to someone as they are trying to get into the working world and saying, wow, this is a true success story in which you can make sure that the financial business model can also be supportive of the wider ecosystem of societal change. Yeah. What, would you, what was the one piece of advice that you give to an individual? I would say, you know, be passionate about what you're working on. Um, I think a lot of people um, uh, do something either for, for a monetary reason uh, or because it looks good on a resume. And mm -hmm. I understand like at certain times in your career uh, or, or you're given your life situations, you may, you may need to do that mm -hmm. and that makes complete sense. But if you're, if you're in an opportunity where you can think freely on what you wanna do, uh, be really passionate about the work you're doing. Um, because as you hit challenges along the way, which mm -hmm. you will in any position, um, you need to be able to push through those. And if you care deeply about what you're working on, you will. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Well, you've heard it from uh, John himself, president and co-founder of Lyft. Thanks so very much for providing some words of wisdom. Yeah, thank you.